Good afternoon. We have a quorum. We'll call the DPW meeting to order. First up is minutes of 814. I don't think Randy passed any out. He just so sent them. I sent them. Oh, he did? Yeah. Come on. Okay. Yeah. Uh, oh, that's right. Yes, I did see them. Okay. Um, motion to accept. Any corrections? No. Motion to accept. Randy's not here, so wait a minute. I'll take the order. Uh, motion will make motion. motion. Motion to accept. Second. Here. Second. Any uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstain. And one abstain. Motion pass. Mr. Chairman. Yes, just a minute. Let me. Uh, wait, who's here? Yeah. Yes, sir. Regarding minutes, if the board would uh, like, uh, I have recently got the um, ability to post minutes for the Finance Committee on okay. the website. Um, I could certainly talk with administrative offices to see whether or not we wanted to do that for the DPW Committee. Okay, that'll be fine. Sure. Okay. So once they're approved electronically here, it'd be just you know, a couple days to yeah. hang up there. I don't know if there is a shingle under the DPW Committee yet, but I would I can talk to Jennifer. Yeah, you're kind of the DPW page. Great, put one of the DPW Yeah, website. pull it under that. Yeah. yeah, so that if once that's in place, then yeah. we'll put the location to put it. Then. Yeah, Jennifer can definitely. All right. Um, just to bring everybody up to date, last Monday was it? I think it was last Monday, a week ago. Eight. Mm -hmm. so, can we get the date right here? So we put them into the minutes correctly. I don't want to be misstating here and get into trouble. Eight, eight, fifth, eight, nineteen. Last, yeah, eight, nineteen. Right. Mm -hmm. um, Carolyn, Dave, Tom, and I had a conference call with CMS Neil. Well, actually, he had a conference call. He actually visited us. I'm sorry, he visited us. And we talked about the contract, and he gave us the revised contract ahead of time. Dropped his price to the uh, eighty thousand, so that we would have another well forty thousand dollars to put towards the uh, schematic design, if you would. And he explained that to do a proper schematic design, you would to get all the details that you would really need to get a you know absolute best price would be more than we have money for. But he says for the money that you have, he says you'll still get a good design. You'll get a good price. He says your contingency may have to be a little bit higher when you go out to bid, but it'll still give you a good uh, well, good estimate. And so Carolyn had some questions that when we advert when we went to town meeting and advertised everything, we used the word schematic design. Neil was using the word conceptual design, and he explained what that is, and I think he gave the memo what what it all is. And so we weren't Carolyn wasn't sure, we weren't sure if we could go forward with that description and so she asked town council town council responded about 20 minutes ago that yes the description that neil gave us is acceptable to use in the advertisement for the uh, architect we want and so we're basically waiting for select board approval to go forward they didn't give us they did not approve needs it hasn't gone to them, no. That's because we're waiting for all this information from the town council. So at the next select board's meeting, we get on the agenda and on select board, hopefully give us approval that they've approved the contract. It's got to go to, I think the contract probably has to go to um, town council for review. Um, yeah, but we're using their template. So we have to, that scope of work, we have to work yeah. a little bit on. Okay. But it's their, it's and, their. Uh, but we have a, Neil has, 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 given, has given us a contract that's the contract basically itself is like three or four pages but then there's 
I don't know, 20 pages of addendums of descriptions, what everything means, and a lot of uh, stuff that is probably boilerplate no matter what you do. But you printed it all. Yeah, I thought it was three pages for some reason. I hit the button and it kept going. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was three pages too. And I waited. It says so one to three. Okay, boom. <laughs> so, but I started, I was going to like, hit the print button. Wait a minute, 30 pages? So I went back and looked at it. Okay, the contract itself is three or four. And then the rest is all, there's like, I don't know, going to be six or seven pages of descriptions and all kinds of uh, details in there. Of, like I said, it's all pretty much boilerplate. But anyways. So we'll get we'll get that reviewed by whoever it needs to be, and there's a whole bunch of signatures. The board of selectmen, um, the town accountant saying that we do have the money. It's typical, typical signature thing to make sure that everybody that needs to approve approves it. It's good to have uh, the board of selectmen, um, the accountant, um, of course CMS sign, signs it. Um, I don't need to sign it from what I could tell. Uh, I'm not sure if you had to sign. I don't think so. Responsible person, that you? Uh, I don't know. If <laughs> yeah, actually, I think it's me. I, I yeah. think I'm, the, I, I'm authorized yeah. in the contracts. Um, so anyways, that's all a bunch of details. Get that signed, get approval by the select board, then we can move forward. Um, Neil was saying when we had the meeting that, that it would probably take about, what do you say, six weeks of that. Once, once you put it in, from the time that we post the advertising, we should be interviewing architect, architect within four to six weeks. And then a couple of weeks, he said, to allow for that, he should have an architect on board by hopefully mid early to mid-October, and then go forward with, uh, he says, town meeting, having something for town meeting in May, he said, should not be a stretch. He says, if you wanted to wait until the fall town meeting, he says, you're gonna have way too much wasted time he's because you'll be ready long before that he's I think May's a reasonable time frame if you move right away and as far as the contract he's we, we were we were discussing it at one point about the 15,000 after the town meeting and to be honest that's irrelevant because when town meeting occurs either it passes or it doesn't we're not going to have any more money anyways to do anything so we're gonna have, if it doesn't pass we'd have to go back to town meeting for stuff so that whether we put 15,000 or an hourly rate it didn't matter we just we, we realized that we're not going to have money to spend we can't spend money we don't have so that little detail in the contract was was a non-issue um, and if we had to go back it would be renegotiations anyways with it so um, that's where we stand with that hopefully we can go forward um, get get the architect on board um, and go from there. You want to add anything to what I said, Tom or no, Dave? It just seems uh, it's going to be a fast pace. Yeah. From yep, yep, the time we hire. Yep. Yep. We're, we're not going. We're not going to be lollygagging on this thing. We're, we're going to have to move, but we're not going to be moving at breakneck speed. But we are going to have to move reasonably fast. Like you know, we're going to have probably a couple of meetings a month once we get an architect to decide what we want to do with the options, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Any particular sticking points that were pointed out? No, the, the biggest thing was he says the, that a real detailed schematic design, the way he was talking, it sounded like the only difference between his schematic design he envisioned and a full design would be the details of the building. In other words, you're going to use this steel here, you're going to use this steel here. It was, you know, it would be a, a real schematic design is way more detailed than we envisioned. But from a, he says a good design, square footage, footprint, what's included, and stuff like that. He says you'll be able to get a pretty, you'll be able to get a good estimate. He was, he, he felt pretty confident of that. He was very knowledgeable. Hmm? Are there any two code requirements that you would, might see as a gap between the conceptual design and the schematic? You know, I don't, we, we don't need to get to a fastening schedule at this point. Right. Yeah. So, um, you know, you, you know, you know, you're not going to have all the electricals. I mean, the building will be pretty. It's not like going to be designing, for example, a school or a building like this, where you're going to need all a lot of details on electrical. It's going to be a. I don't want to say that, but I mean, I don't mean to de make this seem minor. 
but basically the majority of this building is a big warehouse that's got power because it's basically the storage for buildings, storage for vehicles. And, you know, if it has a heating system, it's got a heating system. It's not like, well, you're going to have a control here, a control here, here, except for the office area and the uh, restroom, I mean, the uh, restrooms. I mean, even those are pretty straightforward. Yeah, that's all, that's all pretty much governed by building code. You're not going to get too elaborate on any of that stuff. It's going to be, you know, you're going to comply with building code in the office area, except for the, maybe the size of the office. But even then, you know, it's, it's you're going to have, you know, office, a conference room, and whatever it's going to be. So, um, you know, it'll be up to us a lot of that stuff to try to detail as we get into it. What do we absolutely have to have? What are niceties to have? And what can we kind of, you know, do without if we have to? And that'll all be, excuse me, be determined by the prices we're going to come out with. And what do we think is going to be a budget that we can get approved and try to pair accordingly? And until we get prices, we don't really know. You know, the, the price that we have in the past were all based on, well, we had a building this big, so this building is going to be this size, so it's either, you know, ratioed up or down. So, so when we get into that, and this is probably for Andy more, would, would you guys be able to give us um, information what, how it's going to affect the tax rate for every million dollars that we're spending, or tens of million, or however you guys break it down from finance? That's a pretty easy question with talking with the treasurer and assessor and those types of things. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, those are very salient points to have available for town meeting, for sure. Most important. Yeah. I, I think, important I, I think sure. that should be, to your point, I think they're right. I think that's a pretty good number for us to consider when we're doing this, that if it's going to be probably a million dollars, it's going to cost this this much on a tax rate. Uh, that's, 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 a, that's a good, that's that's a good, that's a good comment. Once, once uh, Dan's back for a little bit before he retires, um, he can help with things like that, but not until we really have firm numbers, which is going to be a couple months. But yes, that you have to go to town meeting with me about that. You know, I mean, there's some debt coming off, and a lot of that depends on you know when this is, what's off, what's on, how the, how far out are we? I mean, like Linda said, a lot of the stuff that we've recently approved all affects the tax rate. But we've had so many things coming off of the tax rate that we approved, if you would, 20 years ago, or whatever the time frame is. And we're just paying, just about to pay it off, and so instead of increasing the tax rate, we'll stay, we'll pretty much stay the same and just use that. We still got to get approval, but from the voters, don't get me wrong. But it's not like um, you know the tax rate's going to go up, you know, 20 bucks because we've approved these. We're going to pretty much stay where we were within reason. Well, with, with hope, but now they're stretching the mortgage time, well, so eventually down the road. It's not going to stay even. It's going to stay. Oh, it's, it's, going to, it's going to go up, but it's, it's, it's not going to skyrocket. Hopefully, but again, again, that was what we. I'm speaking for what we recently approved as far as expenditures. I don't know what's coming off over the next few years, if anything, that will affect the tax rate and affect what we're going to be spent proposing spending on this. Well, I mean, the, the reality is, is we're spending money. Right. Yes, you know, we're taking money. Uh, uh, you know, so we are spending money that. You know, and of course, people, if they're living, they're thinking of the payment, then it's, okay, what's coming off versus what are we adding? But this is how much it's going to cost based on the current uh, current load. Uh, if things are coming off, then the nice thing is, is you won't see your bill increase. But it will still cost X amount of hundreds of dollars. The, the, the increase may not be as much as if you didn't something comes off. We're going to wait and see. I can ask for the town treasurer to, to let it inform us and let us know, you know, best numbers there because I have no clue. We're not even going to try to guess. So well, we have we, we did that. We, we have very we helpful. We just fill. Yeah. Uh, we yeah. have standard information. Yeah. It, I mean, it, it, it might be helpful to go into the meeting going, knowing, or go through this process knowing, okay, every million dollars right now represents X amount yeah. on the tax, regardless of, of the pieces that are coming in or coming I, out. I think what, is, what does that incrementally mean? To a tax bill, but yeah. the net of where we get to are conversations that we would have to have. With I, the I, I think you're right there. Don't don't worry about what's coming off. For every million, I think is a good number. 
what will it cost on the tax rate, including interest and everything else. So we just use that as our basis and don't try to um, guess on what it will actually cost. Well, that, that's something that will be relevant before town, you know, annual town meeting. Um, just yeah. like we, we do for all of our big projects. Yeah, right. yeah. That, that'll all be relevant when we to start. Yeah. That's what the voter wants to know we before spend. we raise their yeah, hand. We, we did that with this building, yeah. the fire station. Yeah. Yeah. Can you imagine if we were putting it up? Five years ago, done it well, five and, years and, ago. And, and that's a real Unbelievable. valuable point that you know I don't. It, I obviously people don't want their taxes to go up, but you look at the cost of, of things now relative yep. to where they were five years ago, relative to where they were ten years ago, and where they might be in another five years. Who knows? But we just know that from 2000 <coughs> or 2019 rather to to now, um, we've seen what a 20 percent increase, if not yeah. more. Forty, you know, we, we know that it's come back down a little bit, but uh, certainly labor hasn't. But. So it's not going to get any cheaper. Look at look at Amherst. I don't want to spend too much time, but you know, look at Amherst. You know, they started off with a you know project that was under a hundred million, and now it's yeah you know, yeah closing on two. You, I look at go back. Well, again, you're talking thirty years, but what we paid for our elementary school. 7.3 million or 7.4, whatever it was, and what the talk in schools cost nowadays are like almost 20 times that. And it's just holy moly! I couldn't imagine having to spend that kind of money um, or get that kind of money approved for a school. It's like holy. I mean, even if the even if the state reimbursement is you know 40 percent or whatever it is, you're still talking 70 million, 80 million dollars out of the, on a tax rate. Sorry to pull us down that tangent. But we, are, <laughs> we were, it was a good thing we built that school, and we did. <laughs> now it's all paid off, too. Anyways, um, so the, is this going to be on the select board's agenda for next Wednesday? Yes. Okay. Would you want me there for that? or? Yeah, that would be great if you okay. could. On this to approve yes, going ahead. Yeah, I just want to. I always want. You want to get the duty printed down. Um, yes, we should have a motion to approve. Um, I make a C motion. CMS as the OPM to move forward with hiring CMS as the OPM. Second. Second, any other discussions? Well, we can only hire for the schematic design or conceptual design because we have no other money, so we can't well, right. do a yeah, blind. We're, we're, we're only hiring we for we are, we are, we are this. hiring CMS for this phase, but almost automatically the CB you can continue without re, re, re advertising for them as, in, as the OPM for the project, correct? Yeah, I'm gonna double check on that because I know that's advised you always keep the same OPM unless something right. catastrophic goes yeah. on. But, but so, you said but you don't have to stay with yeah. me. Yeah. Not, yeah. not that I'm not I think we can suggesting yeah. that you get rid yeah. of yeah. One of the things that Neil did say was that you hire, you're hiring me for this and typically you keep the OPM through the project. However, you have the right to fire to get rid of me and hire a new OPM when a con when, the, when the, we actually go out for schematic for full design and build, he says you know it, it's it's just the way he says you have the right to do that without getting into details, and okay we we'll always thought that you once you hired them you're done through the project but he says no you're not you're not tied to me forever, um, he says I hope you keep me he says, don't get me wrong he says I don't want to leave him he says I like to do this for the end well I mean I think if it works out well why would you wouldn't, why absolutely. would you get rid of exactly, it? Yeah. Exactly. But the only reason I brought it up is because we only have money for the right. oh, yeah. phase right. of this. So right. we can't um, assume that no. the vote is for the whole project. No. If we ever get money right. for more. 
Uh, now the question might come up again, uh, and you probably answered it in some of the other meetings, is that if we're spending money for them to do the uh, conceptual design, and then they have to go out for the schematic design, how much of that would be in the concept? How much of the conceptual money is kind of lost? I mean, or does it all carry forward if you stick with CMS? Or because, if, I mean, if you were to start from scratch and just say, I'm going for a full schematic design, we're not s stopping at the conceptual, yeah. uh, are we wasting anything? T typically, the way, I'll explain what, what Neil, the numbers he used. He said architect's fees typically are 10%, I think he said, of the total project. And he based on our project being $20 million, the architect's fee would be a total of $2 million. I think he said 10 to 15 percent is typically schematic design. Then there is full design, and then there is uh, construction management that they are around. He so if you skip the schematic design and you go right to full design, you're going to combine those two fees, and then you're going to pay for the uh, supervision while they're actually building. Mm -hmm. And so you break it up into different segments. So. What we're spending right now will not be lost in that case. It'll just be less work for the next phase. The next phase would be full design. And Andy, you can look um, on that email where he, because we specifically asked what's the difference between conceptual and schematic. And if you compare the two, um, there is quite a bit of the conceptual that will is similar to the schematic. The carry forward. Yeah. So yeah, it's just definitely you know, the not question dumb. might come up is if you're taking this intermediary step. You know how much are you know, and and I think it's a very valid point to then yeah. say, well, we can. It's already combined heavily yeah. into that. That yeah. one just go all the way for the full design after that. Well, yeah. we're kind of forced because we have the money to to do the full mm -hmm. schematic. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes six to zero. Um, next meeting. Did you want to, uh, Scott got some information on the wetlands. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, I, I talked to uh, uh, the art, the uh, surveyor, and uh, he was off last week, so I just spoke to him Monday. He should have me a quote uh, this week to uh, do the wetlands delineation and uh, putting that on a plan for us. Okay. So, Did he give you any indication how long before he started on it? Uh, that's, he was going to call a couple different uh, wetlands, people that he works with to see whose availability is quicker. There's several in the area that they he works with, but some of them, their lead time is longer than others, so he wanted to try to get somebody uh, lined up sooner than later to uh, do it. So I should have something yeah, it's, it's, okay. it's by the end of the week. And when we talk to Neil about this going outside, he says you absolutely can do that on your own because you don't need the architect or myself yeah, doing that and if you get that done by yourself yeah, it still comes out of your budget he says and the price will be whatever you negotiate he says and he's yeah you're you're certainly free to do what you want to do with that so that's that's fine and we'll own the property in a couple of weeks Carol? uh in another the week. third right another week okay. less than a week are they still talking the third tuesday i think so so the permission issue so. that randy brought up right isn't, isn't be, an issue anymore yeah not an issue yeah so this, uh, the closing is next Tuesday? I think so. Okay. I'll be, all the paperwork got wrapped up today. Excellent. Okay. I know their surveyor too we've used in the past and he does have like all that information like already plotted so we, he said it's not a big deal to yeah. add yeah, the Yeah, he just did that two months ago. That the delineation the to it. So. So. Yeah, that's good. And it's not. Uh, he did suggest that. Uh, he asked me about the parcel now we own across the street against the river. He strongly suggested that he adds that to it because just because of the 200 foot buffer zone. And I said, Yeah, you're the expert on that. If you think that we should have that little bit on the other side of the street added, you know, feel okay. free. So that's he, he said that we should definitely have that. So I okay. said, Yeah, put that yeah. into the price. All right. Is that a separate deed across the street? No. So that goes. With well, it's kind of, it's kind of divided by the end of the road, but I mean that's 
it's still one parcel. It's still one parcel, still and one it affects your wetlands and right. all that. You might as well have it. It's right, still exactly. a parcel, so and that's the wet end of the parcel. Right. 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 Well, one of the wet ends. Yeah. So end, end, end of the road. I mean, technically, that road goes all the way out to Hocking Up, but it's just yeah. it's missing about a, about a you mile. You've got to get the we Duke boys to jump it. Middle Street Middle Street used to go before the 36 flood. All the way down to Mitch's. Middle Street went all the way to Hockenham. If you know where Mitch's Marina is on Hockenham. I drive by it every day. That's where it comes okay, That road used to be Middle Street. The 36 flood wiped, if you've ever been on a Connecticut River, the, the 36 flood wiped out a big U shape. And that's where they had, they rerouted 47 to go up. I say 47 might have, always, might have always existed that way. But Middle Street used to run from where it is today, all the way to Mitch's Marina. Wow. You come out and look, so that. Yeah. If you go to the end of the road, you can see it. And if you go to the end of Mitch's and walk in the whole way, you can look you get back to at where the highway the covered bridge used to be. Huh? You get to where the covered, covered bridge, bridge used, used to be. To be. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's a covered bridge um, where the water, um, where the Callahan wells are, mm -hmm. go about, what, 100 feet north of that day? That doesn't, that doesn't cross the Fort River. That's some other stream or something. That it, no, but where I remember this when I was a kid, where the water Callahan Wells are and 47 crosses right there, you go about maybe was it, 50 feet. Wasn't that there's Mill two, Pond, two, the outlet of Mill there's Pond? There's two concrete, two piers right there. There was a covered bridge there that was no, wiped that, out. That was a mill, that's a mill. That was the north mill, of, mill Pond, they yeah, call it. That was a mill pond, yeah. yeah. I thought that was a covered bridge there. There might, well, there was there might a, have been a covered was, bridge. Was, I remember going there. across that as a covered bridge when I was, a. am talking like in the 50, some kind of mill 57, there. 58, 9 flood. Which got burned down on Halloween. Yeah. And the covered bridge Closer to Mitch's. Also, I don't know if that was Halloween or what it was, but that was. No, that was in the summer. Kids were partying kids, out there. Kids out there. They decided to leave and, and we, burn the bridge down, so the rest of them were stuck. So. Yeah, there, there used to be a lot of covered bridges in this area, yeah. and kids had fun back then. <laughs> So-called fun. Anyways, yep. a little bit of history. Thank you. Um, anything else? I'll set up the next meeting once we find out for the select, but probably be. Um, what's we'll, well talk to the selectmen, get approval, and we'll talk to Neil to set up a meeting. I'll let everybody know. It'll probably be the second or third Wednesday. We'll back to the second for the Wednesdays of the month. Is that okay with everybody? Yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't matter when meetings are. You know, you know whatever fits in with everybody. Now this contract that um, was sent out that was um, CMS that wrote that. Or yes. On that attachment. Just yeah. the, the thirty-four page thing. Yeah. With all that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think it, we use one of our contracts yeah. as, a, as an yeah. example, right? Yeah. I think as it's a combination example. of the two. Yeah. Most, so it's, 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 it's a terms and We sent something. They added something, and it's it's, 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 it's it's a whole checklist. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Because. Uh, Number 1.3.1 1. says OPM shall be prepared before, um, upon the selection of OPM, the town board would negotiate amount compensated and he expects full. There's one paragraph in there that referred to that they would have it through the complete project. And again, at this point, we don't have money for a complete project. Well, are they talking about this part of the project? Uh, I'm saying, I don't know, I can't find it right now. I had it, I thought I had it at home. But anyways, um, I just hate to see the town sign something that we don't have money for or we expect someday it'll get funded. That town may, we never know. It may not be. The spring. Well, I'm assuming town council is going to work this out with them before we sign, right? Hopefully, yeah. Yeah. Oh. 
1.3.2 OPM is expected to be under contract until the project is complete. Well, we expect it to, but nothing for sure. Especially given that we don't have funding. Yeah, yeah I, it's, I, it's, I think it's definitely for th this scope of work. This everything on here is going to pertain to that complete. Because they used the project a couple places. Okay. Okay, so that's my was it one point three point two uh, times schedule. Yeah. One point three. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's worth maybe being more specific. <laughs> so, okay. oh, I just took somebody. Is this yours? You can have it. Six zero reading is history. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Carolyn.